We are demonstrating how to place a subpalpebral lavage line in the lower eyelid of a horse. And then you go ahead and use saline after the dilute betadine in order to rinse that away so it's not irritating to the skin. Next, we're going to block with lidocaine. We're gonna start with our regular palpebral block. So I palpate it over the zygomatic arch. Inject one mil there. If I was gonna be placing an upper eyelid lavage line, I then would um, palpate and feel Right here is our notch to do the superorbital, and so I would block there, but we're going to focus on the lower instead. So I do a local block right where I want the lavage line to go in. Just a little bit in the skin first, and then I redirect the needle, go down towards the orbital wall. If you know where your orbital rim is, you will not end up it harming the eye, but that deep block really helps in order to numb the conjunctiva and the subcutaneous tissue. Next thing we're gonna do is to place preparacaine onto the eye. So I pulled it up into the syringe. And that's to numb the surface as well. And then I'm going to clean out the conjunctival sac with betadine. We use the Myla Eye Lavage Kit. The foot plate keeps the lavage line within the eyelid so that it can't be dislodged. And this is the trocar that's gonna drive the line through the eyelid and keep that foot plate firmly secured down in the conjunctival fornix. I wrap the whole line around my hand in order to keep it out of the way and so that it doesn't drag on the horse's face and become contaminated. This is considered a clean but not completely sterile process. So you're going to guard the eye and protect the eye from this trocar by placing it along your index finger and make sure that the the tip of it is right at the tip of your finger so that when you first go touch the conjunctival fornix that your finger is the first thing to touch. Um, and then you're going to place your finger down into the lower conjunctival fornix and feel for the orbital bone. Once you've felt the bone, then you can just barely walk off that bone with the trocar and drive it through the eyelid. You have to place the needle at a slight angle in order to drive it through the eyelid easily. Then you're going to pull the lavage line down with a snug tug and use your finger to then palpate that foot plate right against the bone. If it's not against the bone and it's too far on the palpebral conjunctiva of the eyelid, then you're at risk of that foot plate actually causing corneal ulcers. So here I am demonstrating that the lavage line can be placed in the lower eyelid, but it can also be placed in the upper eyelid with very similar technique. You're just gonna be driving the trocar through the upper eyelid centrally, and when you do that, you still want to be right up against the bony orbit so that you are at a very low risk of that foot plate causing any corneal ulcers. Now you're going to weave the whole lavage line through the forelock and then the mane. If you don't have a mane to work with, which is not common, but if you didn't have one to work with, you could place little tags with some suture as well as tape along the side of the neck that you can then weave the lavage line through. 
Now we're going to demonstrate how to place the end of the lavage line on where you can administer your medications through the catheter. You're going to be using a 20 gauge catheter that comes in the kit and you're going to want to protect the, the lavage line by placing the catheter up and advancing it a little bit so that your stylet is no longer exposed. So pull that stylet back, advance the catheter a little bit, and then place it down and over the lavage line. And you're going to have to use some force to pull that lavage line down to the plastic portion of the catheter with the stylet still in place. Without the stylet, there's nothing to push against. Now there are many different ways to tape this onto the braid, but I do recommend using a small pieces of tape so that they can be replaced without having to unwind the whole thing and leaving tabs in the areas that you need to potentially unravel later. So you're going to tape the actual catheter in place onto this popsicle stick so that you can have something to hold on to when administering medications. There are so many different ways to tape this and you can use an extension line that's in the catheter kit or you can put the injection cap directly onto the catheter. I usually just put the injection cap directly onto the catheter. Make sure to tape the injection cap separately so that you can change it whenever it gets soiled as well as every few days to keep that clean since this is going to be where you administer the medication. Now you're going to place sutures onto the face to secure it onto the face. I like to pull the lavage line more laterally and out of the line of the tears that are going to potentially be soaking this horse's face from the medial side of its eye. And so I pull that medical tape uh, away from the medial side of the eye and place it more centrally or laterally. I use the medical tape as well as 2 aught nylon suture and place two sutures on either side of the medical tape in the what's known as the butterfly pattern. But you can tape and suture in so many different ways. You can use duct tape, you can suture on the lavage line itself, you can use this tape, you can drive the trocar through the skin instead. So there's many different ways to go about this. Place your sutures in such a way that there are more gentle curves than a sharp 90 degree angle in the line. We like to suture it onto the face in two separate areas so that it is anchored in two different regions and doesn't displace or cause irritation to the horse by swinging around on its face. And this completes how to place the lavage line but you can watch our other videos in order to learn how to medicate through the lavage line and the different ways that you can place medications into the lavage line.